So it's Ascot week. Woo! <laughs> and looking forward to Ascot week. It's always a big week. And it's one of those weeks where I know if I get it right, it could make the month. We've got the added complication of the World Cup this year. Uh, but, you know, that's an advantage as well in terms of levels of activity. Very useful to be able to be active on most things. And the World Cup is towards the end of the day. So that's not so bad because the racing tends to decline a bit towards the end of the day anyway. But Ascot has always been a big meeting. I've got some very good results over the years at uh, Ascot. And I'm hoping to do the same this year. You can never prejudge it. But, uh, you know, there are certain things that come out of the meeting that you see um, very often. So what I've done uh, on the back end of this video is I've uh, been having a look at the spreadsheet that I have collected over a few years to just pinpoint what Ascot looks like, what it feels like, um, and where some of the key points are within the actual race meeting as well. So have a look um, at the rest of this video and hopefully that will give you some key pointers to Ascot and hopefully that will push you in the right direction and hopefully you'll have a really good Ascot. So um, you know one of the things that you generally find at these big meetings is there's an awful lot more money in the market and as a consequence uh, the market is sort of like treacle in comparison to some of the racing that you see on a day-to-day -day basis. But that can be quite helpful. It's, it's, it's sort of like a Marmite situation, really. Some people love it, some people hate it. But um, if you adapt the way that you trade, then you should be able to find that you can take advantage of the extra money that's in the market. Because basically, when there's all that money in the market, everything just slows right down. And um, my response to the way that the market behaves is I increase stakes. Because I know that there are certain types of trades that I'll find much more harder to do. Um, so necessarily if I raise my stakes then I can compensate for uh, the lack of activity in the market by uh, putting more money through in that sense. So it should be an interesting week, I'm looking forward to it and I hope that you have a good week as well. So the figures uh, that we're looking at here are from Ascot as a whole over five years and the reason for showing you this is just to give you a feel for what you can expect over the course of Ascot week. I've got several different averages here but you can see basically, uh, depending upon whether I adjust them, account for certain factors, strip out or add in races and so on and so forth, that basically uh, the average race will turn over about two million. Now the average UK horse race turns over about half a million. So you can see here that there is about uh, four, well over four times as much volume uh, per Ascot race. Over the course of the week, I mean, there are a, a few exceptions where I don't have races within the sample, and that's just because I didn't capture it real time and I haven't gone and backdated it. I could if I want, but I've got enough information to go on, so I'm not too fussed about that. But you can see that it's done generally between 60 to 75, 80 million um, over the course of the week. It did dip in 2010. Um, not 100% sure of the reason for that, because even if you look at the averages, you can see the averages are well below that. But um, overall, you can see, you know, 60 to 80 million probably traded over the course of the week. Uh, so pretty big, pretty big. Now, these percentages down here tell you the distribution of the money that's traded over the week. And you can see that Tuesday is actually the biggest day. So this is unusual because most race meetings sort of peak as the week goes on. Um, but you get a lot of money coming into the market on Tuesday, so you're going to have to hit the ground running on Tuesday. Uh, no practicing, <laughs> you're going to have to get stuck in straight away. Although that said, it's sensible, especially if this is the first big meeting that you've done, that you trade it gently on Tuesday, get used to the conditions and gradually get better as the week goes on. But I can tell you now that Tuesday is a key day. Um, and then it generally, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday are similar, and then it dips on Saturday. And you may ask, why does it dip on Saturday? Well, we'll have a look in a second. But typically on a Saturday as well, you've got other race meetings, um, and they will sort of bump into Ascot, which is a bit of a pain. You need to strip out these two distorting um, Saturdays as well in 2011 and 2012, because they significantly distorted the, how, the, how a Saturday looks. So if you strip out the exceptionals there, then that actually ends up with a much lower figure anyway. So basically Saturday is the quietest day, Tuesday is traditionally uh, the busiest day. Um, 
what else can we tell from this data? Well, if, if we look in and on the individual days, uh, you can get a feel uh, for the week as well. So generally, um, if you look at the Tuesday, the reason that we get more turnover on those days is because we've got three group ones. And you can see we've got group ones on the other days as well, but only one a day, which tends to be the feature race. You can see that there are other group races going on, but you know it's the feature race that generally attracts the volume. So you can see that from within here. So um, feature race obviously occurs mid-afternoon, um, but you can see on Tuesday we've got big race to start with, and you know, and so on and so forth. So that's why Tuesday tends to be a little bit bigger. I've highlighted um, favourites that were at short prices here because that tends to attract most volume, and you can see that reflected in most of the stats. So um, that's why you can see that Tuesday is a big day. And if we go back to uh, 2012, you can see why we've got some distorting figures in here as well, because Frankel went off at 112 in 2012. How appropriate is that? And turned over 6.1 million out of a total of 6.4 for the race. And when we got to the Saturday in 2012, uh, the Philly Black Caviar went off at 125, and as a consequence, uh, that significantly distorted the market because Black Caviar was unbeaten. I don't know if you know the story about it, but Google it if, if necessary. I followed her all the way through the Australian markets, and that meant that there was a lot of money going on here. Basically, the money just piled in ri in ridiculous quantities. So as a consequence. Um, very short price, enormous amounts of money, 12 million traded just on black caviar out of 12 and a half million. And that distorted the Saturday figures um, in 2012. Uh, similar in 2011, to be honest, because uh, Frankel went off at 132 and so you think went off at 1.4. So you think, I think, excuse the pun, uh, yeah, we did run in 2012 as well. So 2010, um, was nothing special. I remember thinking this was a bit of a surprise then, but the market rebounded in the next two years. And we go back to uh, 2009, and that market was, was fine uh, back then. But generally, uh, you can see the sort of pattern that develops there. Shorter prices generate a lot more volume. The Tuesday is the big day of the week. Um, and then generally, the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday uh, are fairly similar. And then the Saturday is a little bit quieter, depending upon what's going on. But necessarily, that's how the week tends to shape up. Um, hope some of that has been useful for you. Uh, that's maybe given you a little bit of depth that you wouldn't have known about or you haven't seen before. Uh, so all I can do from here is to wish you a really great Royal Ascot. If you're interested in learning more about BetAngel, its tools and the opportunities they present, why not visit BetAngel.com today to download a free trial?